But now on to actually talking about the dang comics. Batman 700 is a fairly interesting story. I don't think it's anything grand, nothing monumental, but it was kind of interesting to pick the issue up. I mean, it's a self-contained Grant Morrison story, so there's a lot of craziness, but it's not so referential or self-referential that it's impossible to follow. It's actually kind of an interesting um, bouncing ball story where you more follow an artifact and you get all these different characters. In this case, the characters are Batman throughout time. You start with a fairly classical understanding of Batman, where it's uh, old Bruce Wayne and then Robin, Dick Grayson. And eventually the case jumps forward with this Joker's joke book to the more present day Batman, where you have him and Damien going through the case, which then bounces to Damien in the future as Batman, which has been explored previously, and how this artifact plays more even further into the future, which then bounces to what I think is the weirdest part of the comic, where you see a Batman Beyond sort of envisioning, but it's pretty much implied that Damien's supposed to take the place of Bruce and that as the old crotchety man. And then Terry's still Batman Beyond, and maybe it was the idea of trying to work Batman Beyond into his vision, but that sense has been neglected anyways within the Batman Beyond comics, so personally I'm glad for that. Now what's interesting is there's a lot of knockout artists for each different section. Each one of those sections that I talked about were given supposedly a different artist, and you have Tony Daniel doing the more classic... And then in the future, you have Andy Kubert even doing it, and then you jump to David Finch doing most of it. But what's interesting is in the common context, the Damien and Dick as Batman bit, you have Frank Whiteley who is supposed to do his chunk, but he couldn't even finish it on time, so they switched to this guy, Scott Nolans, who's not a bad artist by any means, but it just does not fit the rest of the comic and certainly does not juxtapose well with Frank Whiteley and with it supposed to being um, not an art switch yet it really jars the comic in a way that it shouldn't. So the Superman book opens with a short story called The Comeback where in which Lois Lane is being chased down by Parasite and they point out it's only a day after the 100 minute war which was this whole event in Superman war the Superman comics if you didn't catch that this is really just an epilogue to it. All that it does is it establishes the fact that Parasite's a really dumb Superman villain, given the fact that he can take him out in one punch, which happens. So, woo. And also that, you may not know this, but Superman and Lois Lane, a huge boner for each other. I mean, I understand it kind of needs to be reestablished, whatever, they've been away for so long, it's nice to see them together or whatever, but it's just for something that's supposed to be a big monumental issue, this fell flat. The second story in the Superman annual is a really bizarre choice. It's entitled Geometry, and in actuality, it's a flashback to the old Dick Grayson Robin, back when he wore the damn Robin panties, and it is just a bizarre choice to have in here. What happens is Robin decides that he can start crime fighting on his own. He doesn't need to be with the Batman for busting up a simple theft ring. And what turns out is he becomes the damsel in distress and Superman swoops in to save him. And then he almost gets caught by the Batman when he checks to see whether or not Dick has done his homework. And in a very odd move, it kind of shows that the story was rushed. Superman grabs the geometry book and starts writing in it, which is bizarre because you don't actually fill out your homework in a book, you do it on scrap paper in a workbook. I mean, all that would have taken is showing a few loose pages in the book and then him scribbling on that. For this to make sense, it's just... It, it's... It should be a minute detail, but given that it's relaying to the title of the story and also the fact that it's just, we're not a century ago, it just seems bizarre. I mean, even the people who wrote this comic had to have done homework in that manner. It's just so odd. Then at the end, it's shown that Batman knew that Superman helped him out. Why it's in 
Superman 700 it makes no sense whatsoever, especially since it's really bad. The last story in here is the start of the Strensky run on Superman, entitled Grounded, and if you're unfamiliar with it, it actually does a good job of setting up where he's trying to go with it. It starts off where there's this press conference where Superman's talking about all the events of the War of Superman again. Then it moves to this lady who's very upset with Superman, you assume it's because she's against what he did, and no, it's because he happened to not be on Earth, and apparently her husband had a brain tumor that he could have seen removed in five seconds, and because he wasn't there, he died, and she's very upset, and it seems bizarre to me, because part of the thing about Superman is he's Superman, he does what he can, but he can't be everywhere at once, he can't save everyone, that's usually part of the dilemma, and this was one life in comparison to some huge galactic event that really only he was able to be a part of and help save humanity and of course I mean Superman cares about the single individual life but versus the way of the thousands and he was the only it just seems so stupid for this to just have that much weight and I understand the importance one is trying to get at but it just feels like such a philosophical disconnect there's a million other heroes and isn't there a damn good doctor who could take care of this apparently not and that was part of the problem but it's just it's a bit much to take in then you cut to batman doomly dick in the tower and they're talking about the technology and how they're able to see individual events how they cut through cloud cover and very technical obviously getting at the fact that oh they're up in the sky and they're just viewing the entire world but they're not very grounded to everything and then it cuts to superman waiting by a tree and the flash is in a rush because he has to go take out some villain and superman asks him when you run across the country like that what do you see what do i see yes seriously you stop me to ask that Fair question, Flash. <laughs> yes. When I'm running flat out, I see what I figure you see when you're flying up there several bazillion times the speed of sound. I see a blur unless I make an effort to see details. It's getting to the point that when they're traveling, I mean, they're just to the point they're not taking in the country. Woo. Um, then you see Superman up in the sky. He flashbacks to Pop Kent. <sighs> talking about the soil and the ground and how it's good to be grounded and da da da. So Superman's back to Earth and he's on some playground. Some kids see him reaching into the soil and just see him walk off. They're like, why isn't he flying? Must be important. And that cuts into grounded and see where that goes. And honestly, I read an article, so I understand what JMS is trying to get to is Superman was originally supposed to be a character for the people and he's lost a lot of that he's become such a galactic character over the years but the other thing is is this superman is not that superman they're different characters and also superman is the first superhero with the scope of these things the character has changed to fit that as well and there are characters that are in different cities and it, the mythology has evolved beyond that whereas returning to the roots isn't a bad thing i just feel this is a little too much to take in and um Stransky's known for kind of the sort of story he had a story called midnight express which kind of touched on a lot of these themes as well and he's bringing this into superman and honestly unless i hear something a little special coming out of it i'm probably just going to avoid the story